Hi and welcome to this Unity game development tutorial series. This video series has been made for the Fraser Coast Council to replace the planned workshops. In this eight part tutorial series, you will learn the basics of creating the game you see here with c -sharp programming in Unity. You will learn how to code a player controller using physics, build levels with modular assets, code basic triggers and logic for obstacles and collectibles, and create a user interface with level progression. In part one of the series, we will go through the steps of downloading, installing, and setting up a Unity project for the first time, as well as cover the core functions and controls within Unity. So to download Unity, we go to the Unity website, just through Google. You can say, get started. Individual. And click get started on personal. You can click returning users. And then download Unity Hub. And click save. And then install that once it's downloaded. So I already have Unity Hub installed. So launch Unity Hub and make sure you have an account and that you're signed in and that your license is up to date. And to install Unity, you go to installs and click add and then make sure that the latest official release is selected and you click next and you want to make sure that Microsoft Visual Studio Community is ticked that is the application that you'll use for programming and uh, all these additional components are for building your game to various platforms um, you don't have to tick uh, Android build support unless you want to build to Android devices uh, and documentation should already be ticked by default and then you just want to go through all of the, that process um, until it's finished installing but uh, I already have it installed so for this tutorial we are using Unity 2019.3.8 F1 so once that's installed, just go ahead uh, and go back to projects and we want to click new project with 3D selected and we can call this my first game and you can choose your location where you want to uh, create the project and then we click create. So when you create a new Unity project, this is what it will look like. The main windows that you'll be using are the hierarchy, scene, game, inspector, project, and console. Uh, and this is just the default layout. Uh, you can actually adjust these uh, by clicking here and sliding uh, the edges. Uh, you can also click on one of these tabs and uh, move the, uh, the windows around. You can have a split screen kind of set up. You can have it just kind of popped out like this and you can drag it back. Um, if you do something and you kind of mess it up and you're not happy with the way it looks, you can always go back to window uh, and layouts. There's some presets here and you, or you can just go back to default for default layout. <clears throat> so just going through the windows, uh, so hierarchy, uh, 
just gives you a list of all the objects in your scene. The scene window uh, shows you what is in your scene. The game window is a view from your camera. Uh, the asset store is uh, just a place where you can get assets, but we can, we can close that. You don't need that for now. Uh, inspector. So when you select a object in your scene, the inspector will show all the properties of that object. You have your, down here on the bottom left, you have your project window that will show all of your assets uh, and packages. Um, and it works just like a folder explorer. You can create folders, you can rename them. Uh, when you want to import assets, you can drag and drop them in here. This is where you can create scripts and store them and all that kind of stuff. And then you have your console. Uh, the console is where you can debug information. Um, you can uh, see any errors or warnings. In the back here in the scene tab, we're going to look at how to move around. So. W, S, A, and D is what lets you move your camera around while holding right click. Uh, and at the same time, you can hold, move your mouse to, uh, to look around. Uh, also, when holding down shift, you can actually move a lot faster. And this is without shift. And this is with shift. Much faster. Um, and you can also just scroll as well. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that. Uh, and also you can click on objects in the scene to select them rather than selecting them uh, through the hierarchy. So that is the, uh, the main kind of functions of the interface. And now we're going to uh, look at how we manipulate objects uh, in the scene. So here we see when we select the camera, we can see the camera preview in the bottom right. Um, and then the, the, the uh, directional light here, we can see where that is selected. Uh, so right now, um, we have the uh, move tool so, uh, selected, uh, which allows us to, when we uh, move, when we select these arrows, we can actually move the object around in space. Right now, it is set to local, um, which means that the controls will be relative to the orientation of the object. Uh, selected. If we go up here and we change that to global, uh, the or orientation of this gizmo, as they call it, uh, will always be the same, uh, no matter which object you uh, select. So with this uh, move uh, gizmo, we have three axes. Uh, this is Y, green is Y, blue is Z and red is X. So if we select the Y, which is up and down, and we, with the left click, and we're moving that up and down, you can see in the top right over here, this value changes. See the value goes up and the value goes down. When we move this one, we see the X value changing. And when we move this blue one, we see the Z value changing. But for a better example uh, of these different tools, what we'll do is we will create a cube object. So right clicking in the hierarchy, we say create 3D object uh, cube. And here we see a, a cube is created. We can see its position. 
rotation and scale. So just like we were moving that light source, we can move this cube in the same way. And this cube, uh, by default, having a scale of one by one is a representation of one unit or, or um, yeah, one unit of, of scale. So moving on now here to the rotate tool, it's the same thing with these axes, X, Y, and Z. We can click these and move them around. If you move something like that, you can press Control Z to bring it back, to undo that. Or let's just say we moved it off a bit by the Z axis, we can actually go up to the properties here in the inspector, and then we can actually put this back to zero to set that rotation back to the way it was. Same thing goes for the, this is the Y rotation, and this is the Z, oops, sorry, I should undo that, and then Z rotation. Next thing is the scale tool. So the scale tool, same thing, X, Y, and Z. This lets you move, this lets you uh, increase the size or the scale of the object in different uh, directions. In the Y direction, X direction, and Z direction. Or if you select this in the middle, it will scale it in all directions. Or we can also change the scale here. If I just wanted to make it uh, two units, wide and high and like that, we can create a cube that is two by two by two. But let's just set that back to one by one, one. Cool. Now to view uh, our cube, um, through our game. Right now, if we look at our game tab, we can sort of see the cube there. Um, so if we select our camera, we can actually see what the camera is seeing here. So with our move tool selected, we can actually adjust where our camera is and kind of center our cube a bit better. And you can see here, as I move the camera, the what the camera sees is being updated in the camera preview. that. Uh, we could even move the camera up a bit and even change the rotation. Now we can see what our game sees. So if we were to hit play, it will automatically switch to our game view. This is not interactive right now um, because we don't have any controls or Interact, interactability kind of set up. Um, but while in play mode, we can actually go back to the scene. Uh, and if we make any changes in the scene, see, we can still select things. Say if I want to scale this object, make it a lot smaller. And we go back to game. We can see our cube is a lot smaller you know, maybe even rotate a little bit. We can see it's different. Now, if we are to click the play button up here to stop it, all of our changes will be reverted. So if I hit play again, then you will see our cube is back to one by one by one and it has no rotation. So it's very important to, to check whether you're in play mode if you want to keep your changes.